I find adventure everywhere And friends with whom I like to share This is my stop along the way Don't really know how long I stay Stop over, might make a new friend Stop over along the road without end Go away, you shouldn't be hiding in here. Oh, are you going to get me in trouble with the inspector? Mmm. Now you're going to get me in trouble with my brother. Come on. Yvette. Yes? We'll be docking in a minute. Would you mind keeping that inspector off my back? If I got a play nursemaid to him, I'm never going to get this cargo unloaded. We oui, moan, Capitan. You think I got everything, Sean? Listen, if you left as much as a matchbook, it'll be waiting for you next season. Well, <laughs> Jack. Hi, Sean. Uh, I didn't expect to see you out of your hole till next Groundhog Day. I wouldn't want to miss a boat. Yeah, uh, hurry, vet. Uh, like I always say, there's no accounting for a woman's mind. It's a night. Uh, miserable cold. Colds are like the weather. People talk about them and no one does anything. Well, somebody's doing something about it right now. There's a doctor in England that's working on an anti-cold vaccine. No reason we can't find a cure. We found a cure for polio and measles. Who's we? The medical profession. Oh, you're a doctor. Mm -mm, not yet. I finished pre-med and had a year of medical school. I'm prospecting up in the mountains now. So I'm hoping this mining will be my ticket back to school this fall. I sure wish you luck. Thank you. And uh, I wish you luck on your hunting. Kevin! See, you got an ear from the Doc Corbin. Yeah, nice young man. You gotta hand it to him, it isn't easy to work your way through medical school. Sure. I got a little secret for you. He ain't never going back to medical school. He's been going back every fall since he first landed here. And you know how long ago that was? Six years ago. Six years? That's right. Trouble with him is he's got bad head rings. Works up in the mountains there at an old deserted mine, digging for his pot of gold. <laughs> he don't know one day from the next. I missed you. Two weeks is a long time. Kevin, I've been gone closer to five. You have? That long? I've been so busy working the mine and studying time slipped by. How's the mine shaping up? Real great. I think in another 15 or 20 feet, I'll hit it. Oh, I hope so. I'll be ashore as soon as I clear with the inspector. Oh, Kevin, I have your new medical books in my cabin. Thanks. I really need him to get ready for the fall session. I'm busting with pride over my moose heads, Sean. I can't wait till I get the stuff and mounted. I've got a headache out of the way to stuff and mount. Well, all right, Mr. Adams. You just tell your friends that you've got the best guide up here. Sean will meet you. Fine, sir. Let's get you aboard now before the boat starts unloading. You take that. Good morning, miss. Good morning. Welcome aboard. What cargo have we this morning? Oh, the usual. We have a stowaway, a, a stray dog. Stop that dog. Back! Hold it! Come on, hold it, hold it. Back, you! Hello. 
Looks like he's had it, huh? It wasn't my fault. He ran right into me, head on. Forget it. Forget it. Here, give me a hand. We'll haul him off the dock there. Leave the dog alone, Sean. Oh, come on now. Stop playing at being a doctor. Come on, get out of the way. I said, who's the dog? Look, who do you take him? Is he hurt? He's okay. He's still breathing. He was just knocked unconscious. I'll be responsible for him. I'll pick the books up later. Of course, Kevin. Just a minute, Doc. Uh, now that you've got a patient to practice on, there's no need to pretend that you're going back to medical school. Uh, I'll tell you what. If this dog pulls through, I'll see that you get lots of patients, uh, starting with this one. <laughs> Don't you worry, sweetie. Look now. If that dog dies, I won't let Doc touch you. the best sound we've heard for hours. Looking for Sean Meacham's cabin, you know? Sure. Sean lives right up the way there. I have a pot of coffee on the stove. You care for some? Sounds good. Come on in. Oh, my name is Kevin Corbin. Jim Parker. Glad to know you. Hello. Glad to know you. Come right. on. Drop your packs here. Oh. Thank you. We don't get too many people up this way since the big mine closed down. I'm the only one still working a claim here. It's nice to talk to someone now and again from the outside. Let's get some coffee. Come on in. Make yourselves at home. I'll get that coffee. Parker, this is a great photo of an Aquila Cursetos. How'd you know that? Are you an ornithologist? No, just a hobby. I'm a professor of economics at Stanford. My companion is a sorry PhD from there, too. Professor of Greek. Amazing. I used to know the Odyssey by heart. I'm studying medicine now. Harvard Medical School. Oh, great school. What are you doing? Taking a season off? No, I'm trying to accumulate some money. Any luck? Well, it's a little early to tell right now but I think I might be close to hitting some high-grade copper ore. If I do, and it's back to school with enough money to continue my education. It's pretty tough going. Mm -hmm. I'll go along with that. I worked my way through eight years of college without a chunk of money. Oh, well, sure, I nearly gave up the ghost a few times and quit, but I'm glad I didn't. What have you been doing up here, sabbatical? No, hobby safari. Parker is a camera bug, and I want to get animals and birds from this part of the country on film. So he decided to let nature take its course. I'd sure like to capture something like that on film. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. There's a pair of them up in the mountains right behind the cabin. How long are you going to be here? Well, not too long. I have to be back for fall session. Well, I'll probably be back to fall session, too. I completed pre-med in a year of medical school. How long have you been up here? Six years. Six years? It's a long time to be away from school. Especially med school. I know, but I haven't been wasting my time. I have my books and I've managed to keep up. I bet I've memorized Gray's Anatomy backwards and forwards. And when I'm snowed in here, I plow through that other stuff time and again. I could go back to school tomorrow. I could. Well, thanks for the coffee. Yeah, it was real good. You have no idea how good it is to talk to people like you. I mean, who understand? I, I sure wish you'd stay. It's almost like being back at school. Well, we better be pushing on. We'll come back later if we have time. Sure. <laughs> Up 
the way about, oh, about 100 feet. There's a game trail. Just follow that on into the mountains, and you can't miss Sean's cabin. Well, thanks for the coffee. And good luck in your fall session. Thank you. Go on. Well, fella, looks like you're the only one that believes I've got a chance. Come on, let's go to work. to me, credit goes to Mother Nature. He sure is a fine partner. Mm-hmm. And it's important to have a good partner. Let's get some coffee and a sandwich. What do you say, fella? You want a break for lunch? Oh, Kevin, I brought your new books. They're in the Jeep. Were you able to get a copy of Linden's Orthopedic Surgery? But I had to go to three Vancouver bookstores to get them. Linden's done some wonderful work in the field. I met him once. He's an orthopedic man, isn't he? And that has to do with children, doesn't it? Mainly, yes. Kevin, we haven't talked about it much, but when we're married, I'd like to have three children, wouldn't you? Sure, the whole baseball team. After I'm finished school, we'll give it some serious thought. I think it's important to talk about it seriously now. Kevin, what about school? Are you really going back this fall? It all depends upon what happens here at the mine. When you met me at the boat, you told me everything was wonderful at the mine. What happened? Nothing's happened, Yvette. <laughs> I suppose you heard the ordered an essay out too well. Kevin, do you really have to hit it big before you go back to school? There's a real simple answer. I have to have enough money to go back to school. Is that the only reason? Honey, you're talking like a district attorney. What do you want to know? Just ask me, I'll tell you. Why are you the only one who stayed here when everybody else left? You know there's nothing here. There is enough ore here to pay for my education. Why don't you go back to school and work your way through? A lot of people do it. Because I tried it, and it didn't work. My last year in school, I had a night job. I managed to get a few hours sleep before classes. After that, I had to work on my next day's assignment. If then I'm a slow study. If it takes someone an hour to do something, it takes me two. So I found myself studying up until the time I had to go to work. This went on for months. All it got me was bad grades. I didn't flunk anything, but I sure managed to wind up top man on the probation list. Now, this means I've got one term to make good. If I don't, I'm finished. I can't risk working my way through school. Oh, Kevin, let me help you. You mean get married and go back to school? Yes. I can work. I'd be so glad to. It's my life, too, and our future. Please let me have a stake in it. You really want to make things tough, don't you? Yvette, I've seen married couples on campus. As soon as the first baby comes along, they chuck school right down the drain. Then you don't care how I feel or what I say? No, not when it comes to going back to school. I have to do it my own way. And your way is to hide here in the mountain and hope for a strike. Maybe a big wind's going to come, Kevin, and blow you back to school. But it's not going to happen that way. The chances are 100 to 1 against you. Maybe the people in town are right. 
You'll never go back to school. Oh, I don't care what the people in town think. Take a good look at yourself, Kevin Gorman. It's later than you think. Are you through? You bet I'm through. I'm through playing second fiddle to all these books and that hole in the mountain. <laughs> the books. You better trade them in for fairy tales. They go better in your dream world. Try. 
All right, but remember, it's his own decision. His lungs is badly crushed. Uh, where's the nearest doctor? Kitimat, oh. I guess. It's about 40 miles across the mountain. It takes, oh, good three hours by jeep. We better get started. Uh. If you do, you'll be grinding a dead man. By the time you get there, his throat will be swollen shut. Uh. Drop these in the boiling water. What are you going to do? I'm going to open up his throat so he can breathe. Uh. You what? Sean, his throat is swelling up. It's pressing against his windpipe. I have to open it up. I'm going to put that tube into his trachea. Are you going to let him do that to your friend? I heard what he said. Parker will die if he doesn't. Well, he's sure to die if you let Corbin cut on him. Better take him to the doctor. Now you're talking. Now you listen here to me, Buster. Look, it's all right for you to fool around with dogs, but when it comes to human beings, they're not... <laughs> Watch him, fellow. If you go ahead with this and he dies, you will be responsible. Now, when I tell you, I want you to keep the incision clear, okay? Down in the States in September, be sure and drop in and see us. I'll be there. We'll be there. <laughs> Ooh.
Traveling around from town to town Sometimes I think I'll settle down But I know I'd hunger to be free Roving's the only life for me Adrifting, the world is my friend I'm traveling along the road without end 